Welcome back to Cruise Blog, everyone. This is Allie. Are you new to cruising or looking maybe just for some general tips and hacks? Well, you've come to the right place. I'm going to be going over the top 40 cruise tips and hacks. Let's get started. Cruising is a wonderful way to travel. It's a fun vacation that offers so much to see and do. Today's cruise ships are like floating cities with tons of activities, venues, and nonstop activities. You'll visit incredible destinations throughout the world. There's a lot to choose from though. And understandably, planning can be a bit overwhelming, especially if you're a first time cruiser. So here are some of our favorite cruise hacks to plan, save time, and your money to make the most of your cruise vacation so that it can be all that you want it to be. First and most important is picking a cruise. Our first tip is to book during the off season. Cruises are more expensive at peak times like holidays and summer vacations. If you're flexible with your time, this can save you a lot of money. Another great hack is to select an inside cabin or a guaranteed cabin because they tend to be lower in price. For those of you who don't want to plan on spending much time in your room or you aren't fussy about your cabin type or location, this is a great option. There's so much to do on a cruise ship that you may wonder why it's even worth spending extra for a large room if all you're going to do is sleep, shower, and change in there. Number three, if you have specific preferences, reserve early to get the cruise and cabin type that you really want. You're in luck because most cruise lines will let you price adjust if a better price comes along, unless you've paid your cruise in full. So in general, the lowest prices for a cruise tend to be when sailings are released for booking. Our best tip is to book early and reprice often. Number four is to use a good travel agent. A good travel agent can save you time and money. And if you're a first time cruiser, they can be really helpful in sharing their experiences and expertise. And it's at no extra cost to you. Even people that cruise a lot still find value in a travel agent for making the entire process so much easier. Number five is that travel agents aren't just for cruises. Let your agent recommend and coordinate your flights, hotels, and transfers. There are changes. They can spend the time on the phone, not you. So don't hesitate to ask your travel agent for suggestions or bring up any questions that you might have. Odds are they've seen and heard it all before. So you've booked your cruise. Yay. Now what? First, check the cruise planner. This is a hub for all the information on your cruise to see what's available, like port times, excursions, activities, dining packages, and more. The more that you can pre-plan, the more time that you'll save on your vacation and the more money you'll probably save. Number seven is that drink packages could save you money. Do you need a drink package? This is a hot topic for many. Drink package costs vary by sailing and they fluctuate all the time. Take a look at the current menu prices and figure out how much you think you might drink every day. Keep in mind that port days, you'll be off the ship so you might not have as much opportunity to use your drink package. Equally important can be the convenience factor of having a drink package so that you don't have to worry about running up a big bill at the end of your cruise. Number eight is that you can always change your mind later. Extras like excursions, drinks, and dining packages can be canceled and rebooked if the price changes or if you change your mind. Because best of all, there's no penalty or cancellation for canceling pre-purchased items, but make sure you check the fine print to be sure. Number nine is to never fly the same day as your cruise departs. Plan to fly in at least a day early. This is a really important one. You don't need the added stress of delayed flights or missed connections. If you don't arrive on time, the ship will not wait for you. And the last thing you want to do is put your entire vacation in jeopardy because you wanted to save some money on a hotel room. Number 10 is the power of the internet. Follow messaging boards or social media for specific sailings. A good source for tips on discounts, hotel recommendations, or group activities on the cruise can also be found there. You may discover a tour that you never would have considered otherwise, or perhaps other cruisers are organizing a private excursion that you'd like to join. Number 11 is to take advantage of social media. Do you have a question for the cruise line? Try social media. Facebook and Twitter can be a really quick way to get an answer. Social media teams can answer questions quickly and meaning you won't have to call and wait on hold. Number 12 is to get a passport. Although not always required for cruises, if your taxi gets a flat tire or you miss your port departure, it's tough to fly home without one. Passports do have an additional cost, but it's a great investment for your travel future. And similarly, number 13 is to have travel insurance. A not so glamorous part of trip planning is buying insurance. No one plans to get sick or hurt on their vacation, but unfortunately it happens. Medical, trip interruption, and cancellation insurance are all really good ideas. Not every travel insurance policy is the same, so make sure that you're shopping around and be certain that it covers things that you want to have covered. Okay, now we're going to be talking about packing and prepping. 
Number 14 is to bring a water bottle. Bottled water on the ship is extra, so a reusable water bottle can save you a lot of money. And number 15 is to make copies of your important documents. Make copies of your passport and your ID and make sure you email copies to keep them safe for yourself and you have easy access. Although copies won't be acceptable by government officials, it may help if you were to lose the original ones. Number 16 is to download the cruise app beforehand. Your cruise line app is a great resource for info and it's often used for booking activities on board as well. Be sure to download the app while you're at home because it can take a lot longer to download when you're on the ship's Wi-Fi. Number 17 is to check what you can't bring on board. Make sure you take a look at the cruise line's suggested packing list along with the prohibited items. Power strips, electrical cords, and baby monitors are all on the no-go list. Number 18 is to pack medication that you need. Bring some seasickness medication or other prescription meds that are important for you. Drugstore supplies are limited on the ship and they're very expensive. Be sure to pack more than you need just in case you're delayed getting back home. Number 19 is to leave your new shoes at home. Just don't bring your new shoes on vacation. It's never a good idea to break in a new pair while you're on vacation because blisters are absolutely no fun. Number 20 is packing cubes. I love packing cubes. As a chronic overpacker, these are a huge saver. A lot of people swear by the packing cubes for efficiency, and I totally agree. Also, rolling clothes is another great way to save space. Number 21 is to bring your own alcohol or drinks on board. Most cruise lines will let you bring two bottles of wine along with 12 pack of bottled water or pop. This can be a great way for you to save money, especially when pop is $3 a can on board. But each cruise line has its limits, so make sure you check first. Now let's talk about tips once you're actually on board and you've started your vacation. Number 22 is to avoid roaming charges. Leave your phone in airplane mode and turn off cellular data immediately because you don't want to incur any roaming charges. You can still use your phone and access the ship's Wi-Fi if your phone is on airplane mode. Number 23 is to skip the buffet. Avoid first day buffet lines by trying a cafe for a sandwich or grab a slice of pizza. There's usually other grab and go alternatives with shorter lines on the first day of the cruise. So don't feel like you absolutely need to go to the buffet and wait in the line. Number 24 is to pack a bathing suit on the first day. Try the slides and other popular venues on embarkation day because the lines are usually shorter, but just make sure you bring your bathing suit on board in your carry-on. Most passengers pack their bathing suits in their check bags and that hasn't arrived to their stateroom just yet. There's far less competition for the popular slides and activities on the pool deck if you go the first day. Number 25 is to pack important must-haves in your carry-on luggage. Make sure that your carry-on has all of your other necessities like medication, glasses, and your important documents to get on the ship. Luggage delivery can be a couple of hours, so you don't want to be in a situation where you need to have something critical and it hasn't arrived to your cabin yet. Number 26 is to take advantage of better prices on port days. Port days can be a really good option for highly sought after activities or good prices at the spa. Check the daily cruise planner to see when things are open and ask crew members if there are any specials or discounts available. Number 27 is to look for hidden USB plugs. Do you have a lot of electronics that need to be charged with limited plugs? That's how it always is with me and my husband. Most new TVs have a USB port that can be used to recharge your phone when the TV is on. You can also check out your stateroom foam to see if they have a USB plug as well. Number 28 is to use room service for breakfast. Continental breakfast room service is usually complimentary on board. Having room service bring your breakfast is a peaceful way to start your day. Imagine sitting out on your balcony, sipping your morning coffee, and looking at the waves roll by. Nothing better in my opinion. Number 29 is to not be afraid to ask for other menu options. If you don't see anything on the menu that you want for dinner, don't be shy to ask your server if there are other options available. The staff are so accommodating and they are eager to please. Also, if you have a dietary restriction, be sure to let your waiters know that as well. Number 30 is to take advantage of customer loyalty programs. Make sure that you take advantage of any status perks, like free drinks that you might be eligible for. The benefits that you earn as a loyal cruiser can end up saving you a lot of money. So next, let's get into port excursions. Our 31st tip is to use Wi-Fi in port. There are often a lot of free places that you can get Wi-Fi as long as you purchase something like a drink. This can be a cost-effective way to check in with your friends or family or post some really great content on your social media pages. Number 32, DIY tours. Do-it-yourself excursions are a great way to save money. If you just want to walk around the port or take a quick taxi to the beach or town, you can go out on your own. Do some research ahead of time and plan lots of time to get back to the ship though, because again, the ship will not wait for you. Number 33 is to download maps for offline use. If you don't have internet or data coverage in port, download Google Maps ahead of time and use it offline. You can add points of interest on your Google Trip Planner to customize your plan and have a better idea of where you want to go once you get to port. 
Number 34 is to ask crew members for tour ideas. Get suggestions on where to go in port from your crew members and ask what they like to do when they're in port. Because crew members often visit these ports time and time again, they can be a great resource for some hidden gems or maybe a local mom and pop restaurant that has great local cuisine. Number 35 is to save money by drinking in port. Get a drink while you're in port. If you don't have a beverage plan, this can be a really great option to save money. There's usually bars within walking distance of the ship that have a lot lower prices than what you'll find on board. Number 36 is to double check the time that you disembark. Pay attention to ship time before you leave for a tour. Cruise ships are on ship time and not local time. That's very important to remember. So pay attention to when you need to be back on the ship. Some people take a wristwatch and they'll set it to the cruise time to avoid any confusion in port. And finally, the saddest part, which is the end of your cruise. Number 37 is to check your bill before you leave. It's a lot easier to deal with it when you're on the ship at guest services rather than when you head home. Billing discrepancies are best taken care of while they're on board. Calling the cruise line later involves many hoops to jump through and it can be a tedious process. Number 38 is leftover onboard credit. Play hand at the casino and redeem the rest in cash. We love this tip. Number 39 is that you can walk off with your own luggage. If you're in a hurry, carry your own bags off the ship, but also don't book a flight before 12 p.m. just to be safe. Number 40 is to book another cruise before you leave. If you loved your cruise and you already can't wait for your next one, there's a really great opportunity to book your next cruise while on your current cruise. Booking on the ship can give you extra perks like onboard credit or a lower deposit amount. All right, that's our top 40 cruise tips and hacks. Did we miss anything? If so, comment below what you think is a great cruise hack that someone needs to know. And if you liked this video, please make sure to subscribe to Cruise Blocks so that you can be alerted anytime we upload a new video. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like below. It really means a lot to us. Until next time, everyone, happy cruising.